The most interesting thing in the debate was Alata Darling's admission that we couldn't be stopped from using sterling, totally different from the, the Chancellor. I laid out what the currency options were for Scotland, but I also argued persuasively why a sensible agreement, common sense for a common currency... But you said you'd use what, it unilaterally, no, First Minister. No. So why would the Bank of well, England back I, I, up I, Scottish I, banks, which were sorry, over a thousand percent of I suggest you go back to the debate. You can't play it being Alistair Darling. You know, he had his chance and uh, he muffed it last night. That was part of the debate. Been, the currency bluff has been called. The Scottish People are calling that bluff. Now, you're We're an economist, for... you know I'm talking about no. lender of last resort. You say you're using the Bank of England, using the pound unilaterally. Can I, can, I just, the... can, I, can I just say that you cannot now impersonate the no campaign. The no campaign had their chance. Their bluff has been called. The people have, I think, overwhelmingly in Scotland now, in poll after poll, shown we want to keep the pound. That is the decision that the Scottish people are being asked to make. That is the sovereign will of the Scottish people. I've explained in enormous detail why it's good sense for Scotland, it's good sense for the rest of the UK. We've explained what the other currency options are for Scotland. But we're fighting a campaign to get a mandate from the Scottish people to have common sense from a current currency. That's what won the debate last night, and that's the message that's going to resonate over the, the next three weeks. Just, just one, one last time. Very specifically, <coughs> you said Plan B was to use unilaterally... Uh, sterling and the Bank of England uh, at that point uh, would not pardon. be able to support well, Scottish banks. Whatever you were watching last night, you, I mean, you remember you were on Channel uh, Sky instead of the, the BBC, what we explained were the currency options for Scotland. As I said, free plan Bs, if you like. But we explained why the currency union, a sensible plan for a sensible currency between Scotland and England, is the thing we're asking for the mandate for. That's what won the debate last night. I mean, have a look at what the people thought about it, the audience thought about it, everybody apart from Sky News apparently. This debate is moving on to people realising to protect our national health service, we have to have financial control, to have job creating powers for Scotland. That's what won the debate. Get with the debate, man. The people of Scotland are there. Maybe Sky News will catch up one. The Queensbury rules, though, you, you, you said that Darling uh, supported a number of Conservative policies that he doesn't support. You've got to admit that. Alistair Darling is a front man for the Conservative Party in this campaign. A front man for the Conservative Party? Well, Alistair Darling is an alliance with the Conservative Party in this campaign. That is what the no campaign is. Now, what I want to see now is now that Alistair Darling's taking part in no mother debates, then let's have the real leader of the No campaign, David Cameron. Let's have him in Scotland now. Let's see if he can do any better than Alistair Darling did. I don't think he will, because in the key issues of protection of our public services, for which we need financial control, not just administrative control of our National Health Service, on the key issues of job-creating powers, where Alistair Darling was totally unable to articulate any job-creating powers on offer to Scotland if there was a no vote. On these issues, yes, are winning and winning decisively. So let's see if uh, let's see if Mr. Cameron is prepared to come to Scotland and have the debate, perhaps on Sky News. And let's see well, if he we'd, can well, do, we'd welcome that. Let's see if he could do a better job than his front man.